Hello everyone, Laura Freeman here with Art Oddity, and I have with me today Samantha Cortez, who will be our spotlight artist for March. And I'm so excited to introduce you to Samantha. And um, let me tell you a little bit more about her. Samantha is a contemporary expressionist. She is a self-taught artist learning through a process of trial and error and fun. Focusing her attention on abstracts and abstract landscapes, she uses acrylic paint, plaster, and other media to explore her intuitive art process. Samantha lives in Washington, Pennsylvania with her husband and two young children. Samantha, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. So yes, you're going to be our March Spotlight Artist. And yes. uh, tell me, I, I would love to hear more about you and your experience as an artist. Sure, absolutely. Um, so it's kind of a strange road to where I've come. Um, so I've always been a creative person. I've always kind of had that in me um, where I was looking for creative outlets. Funny enough, art was not one of them. I was a terrible art student. I remember in middle school, I don't know if, I'm sure everybody did similar things where you had like the fruit bowl and you had to draw it and paint it. And I was awful at it. And I, I loved art. I thought it was so fun, but I could never do the assignments uh, that they were trying to teach. And so I kind of was like, okay, art's just clearly not my thing. And I moved on to other creative outlets, like just when I was growing up different crafts. And then as I got older, you know, I would find outlets through cooking, gardening, anything I could do. If it, there was something in my house where I could spruce it up creatively, I would do that. Um, and then um, 10 years ago, I actually started painting on wine glasses just kind of for fun and I'd paint little flowers and I was like, oh, this is cool. I, you know, I, I like painting and, and I kind of did that for a little while and then you get married and have kids and life goes on. <laughs> um, and then, so um, I kind of, it was fall of 2020. So COVID hits, social life is pretty much at a zero. You know, you're a little stressed out and kind of just need an outlet. And we were doing a bathroom renovation in our, our house upstairs and um, I painted the walls teal. And I was like, I want a really cool piece of art for this renovation. And I, again, am one of those people that's like, I'm not gonna buy something. I kind of have an, an idea in my head. I'm just gonna go ahead and try and make something. So I get a canvas, I get some paints. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm like, I'm gonna paint an abstract piece. Yeah, that'll be, yeah, I'll figure that out. That'll be great. And so I painted it and it probably took me, every attempt I kind of did every layer was like, oh, that's kind of weird. But I kept going with it. And by the end, it probably took me about two weeks of just trial and error. And then it was beautiful and I loved it. And I was like, what a fun process. And not only was it a fun process, but it just gave me a creative outlet. And so I just continued exploring with it. And um, so I started just learning what I could. I would watch artists and try to figure out like what I liked about their paintings, what I didn't, how do they do that? And I would come to my studio space and just try to figure that out. How, why do their colors look so cool? What am I doing that's not, why don't mine look like that? And then I would play and I kind of developed my style and I developed a whole process around that. Um, and then that was about just over a year ago. And then I started my um, Instagram account because I was making all kinds of artwork and I thought that it was probably overloading some of my friends and family who were like normally in it for kid pics and I have my art up and I'm like, I'm gonna create a separate art account. And then I started getting a little bit of a following and people were commenting and then people started wanting to buy some pieces, which was fantastic because my canvases were building up and I didn't really have a lot of space for them. So I was like, perfect. I love doing this. If people are going to buy stuff, I'm 100% in. So that's kind of, it just kind of snowballed from there. I would create pieces, people would buy them, and then they would see artwork and go, well, can you make something for my space? And I started doing lots of commission work. So um, here I am now, 
you know, that was fall of 2020 and we're just starting the new year of 2022. And I am, a, I am about to have my first gallery exhibit awesome. uh, next week. Yeah, actually this weekend, Saturday is the opening. And then I have another gallery I'm talking to that they want to have some of my art to sell there. Um, I have um, a big giant painting in a restaurant. They just purchased um, a commission piece. It's a triptych for there. So my art journey has been if you would have told me this is where I would end up um, creatively and, and doing this and loving this, I would have thought you were crazy. But here I am and I love it and I just want to keep going. That is so exciting. <laughs> I love that it just shows that you don't have to be formally trained in art, that you can start exploring and searching mm -hmm. out that, that information that you need. Yeah, It's so true. And I used to think that that was I was kind of embarrassed by that and thought who's gonna nobody's gonna be interested in my art i don't have any formal training like there's no value in what i'm doing and i realized that you know maybe if you're a nurse sure you can't say i'm self-taught but if you're an artist there is so much value in artwork because it's it's infinite what you can create and everybody's imaginations are different i mean I always had a wild imagination and I don't think I realized that until I was an adult. I just thought everybody kind of did. Mm -hmm. And I, it's just until now I realized that that a wild, wild imagination is kind of linked to just being creative in general. And you kind of need that to, to feed into your art. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, so how has art impacted your life? Obviously the last two years, quite a bit. Yes. So I would say, um, when I first started, it was mostly the escape and the relaxation um, of of the process. So I started just to do it for the bathroom renovation and I loved it and I kept going and I would paint. I still do this. I paint at night when my kids go to bed, they're, they're little ones. And so it's it's just this amazing space for me to get into a creative zone. I have this outlet now where I can kind of come into this space and I put my ear buds in and I put music on and I can just creatively do whatever I want to do. So it's, it's like a reset button, you know, you have long days and it's just this place for me to kind of find myself and find my creativity. Um, and it's just been this amazing, it's just been this amazing journey and therapy and, and self-realization. Yes. And then on top of that, to be able to connect that with people and have them want to purchase work and, and sell work is just, it's, it's like the icing on the cake for it. Um, and I think probably, you know, being that I, I had this creative urge forever and I, I didn't really funnel it into art until recently, you know, I think about how cooking was one of my outlets and I, there was a time period where I would probably multiple nights a week just cook a different recipe. I'd find a new recipe because the same old is too boring. I want to create something new and I'd get a recipe and then I never follow the recipe because that's boring too. I want to make it different in my own and have my own little spin to it. And, and I think that was when my husband's like, can we just have like spaghetti again? <laughs> it was a little too much. So I think what it's meant to my life it's just been it's kind of been magical the way i've been able to find something i'm so passionate about and i kind of find i, I feel like i'm where i'm meant to be i feel like this is what i was what i was supposed to be doing i never really felt like i had a, a purpose out like as far as doing something and now i'm like this is this is, this feels natural this is feels like a good fit this is where i'm supposed to be so it's been incredible <laughs> and that's such an amazing feeling yes i it is that. yeah awesome um so what words of wisdom would you like to give to any aspiring artists aspiring painters so in my limited painting i feel like i have acquired one giant piece of wisdom and maybe other artists have already you know learned this lesson but it is don't be afraid to let go and don't be afraid to start over. Um, when I first started, I would, every new piece was like my baby. And I was like, it's beautiful, it's magical. And sometimes it was, and sometimes I would come back the next day and, and look at it and it wasn't quite right. 
But then I didn't know what to do with it because I'm like, I created this. It, I, I can't just get rid of it. And um, lately, um, I have just gotten so good at being able to look at something and go, this is not, this isn't working. You know, that was fun. I learned a lot in the process of painting it. And there's pieces of it that's great, but I can make it better. And it's actually like this piece behind me. I had it, I thought it was done. And then I've, nope, we've, we've started over. And, you know, maybe some of it will get saved. But I think if you try to cherish every little piece, then everything doesn't have as much meaning. Whereas if you really take every piece to its end and aren't afraid to start over and let them go, you'll come out far further and your artwork will, will reflect that. Yes, absolutely. I agree completely. That's that's perfect advice. I know, <laughs> I know that artists do kind of get attached and they're like, I don't want to mess it up. I don't want to mm -hmm. paint over what I just did. But yeah. Yeah, it's hard to do. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So what message do you feel like you send through your own personal artwork? Um, this, I would say it's about connection to me. So I throw all kinds of emotions into my artwork, whatever I'm feeling at the moment. Um, you know, I, I'm very expressive with that. And that's kind of how I, that's just my part of my process. And so when a piece is done, my end goal is whoever's looking at that, I want them to connect with that. I want them to, if they're just observing it, kind of feel that and, and have that impact them. If they're say buying it for their living room, I want whatever that connection is that they have to that. I want it to say something. I want it to speak. So I think um, like all art forms, it can be about connection, but especially with visual arts. Yes, absolutely. What, um, tell us more about your workshop that you're going to be doing for the Art Odyssey membership. I'm excited yes. for it and it's going to be in March. So tell us about mm -hmm. that. Okay, so um, the main three components that we're going to focus on. Um, first is about how I choose my colors and how I mix my colors. Um, again, I did not have formal training in this, so it was um, something I just learned along the way. And I feel like I'm, I'm really happy with where I've brought my color and where I create my palettes from. And I think that would be something that maybe if you've painted forever, you're just starting out, you could hopefully find some value in a seeing the, my process and kind of maybe incorporating that in your process. And so we'll work through the color mixing together and um, I'll kind of show how I use different colors to create layers. Um, the second piece will be how I use photographs as inspiration for abstract art. And so that means kind of taking photographs and then breaking down the elements um, with lines and shapes and using that as inspiration for our structure. And then we'll kind of go through that process step by step. And then at some point it may divert for you and you kind of take it in a different direction. But I think that's kind of what, what an inspiration starting point is all about is starting someplace and then just kind of letting it go. But at least it gives you the foundation to start on. And then the third piece that we will do is build heavy textured paint. So I use like an all purpose plaster. And so I will walk you through um, the first day we will go ahead and lay the plaster down and then give it a day to dry. And then I'll show how you can apply the paint to that to create really cool effects and, um, and color awesome. on top of it. That sounds great. I know that, you know, you, the things that have drawn me to your artwork are, I feel like you have a very sophisticated uh, color palette. It's, you know, ah, thank you. I, I love the choices that you use. And then also the, that heavy texture, I love that. So those are the things Thank that I, you. I associate with your artwork. So I love that you learn those, those processes that you follow. And I think it's great too that you're showing how to take an abs or take a, a photograph to inspire abstract painting because a lot of people probably think that abstract painting just comes out of thin air. And you know, a lot of times it doesn't. It can come from a photograph. And so yeah. I love that you're gonna show us that. Yeah, and I think through that process, I can kind of show you some of the different art tools that I use and the ways that I use them because I think everybody does that a little differently. So we can use that to facilitate teaching different processes 
Yes, absolutely. And I love learning all the different processes because there's, there is no wrong or right in art. It, that's all it mm -hmm. is. It's different techniques, different skill sets. And so I love learning from all of these amazing artists and yourself included. And um, what tools do you have a favorite tool that you feel like you go to every time? I do. I have, I have, okay. I couldn't choose just one. So my favorite tool by itself is it's, not a palette knife it's actually a cheese knife and i i know i shattered the end of it a while ago and then i kept using it and then i cut myself and so my husband put electrical tape on the end so now it's a little safer but in general i just love the effect that this has um and it's it's a different type of spread than the palette knife so we'll oh. be using something like this or similar and then the other two my go-to's that i think i use in every single painting are just a water sprayer and paper towels I can't not, I cannot do a painting without those. They're my staples for sure. Awesome. I'm excited. Um, so where can people find you online? I know I've got your website here. It's um, samanthacortezart.com. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, where else can they find you online? Um, I'm also on Instagram at trial by paint, kind of like trial by error, but trial by paint. Um, where and I'm on there. I post a lot of stories and I post new artwork and a lot of processes too. So that's kind of a fun follow along as well. Awesome. So everybody should go follow Samantha because her Instagram is a lot of fun. I know I've enjoyed watching her videos and her artwork pop up. And um, so if you guys are interested in Samantha's workshop, it will be in March on March 8th and 9th. Um, and if you are interested, you can reach out to Samantha and she can give you her affiliate link or you can reach out to me. And I would love to see you all there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to explore abstract expressionists with, uh, with Samantha. So thank you, Samantha, so much for being here today. Absolutely, thank you. It was a pleasure. Awesome, okay. Well, um, everybody have a great day and we'll see you all soon.